Hello. It's clearing. So again, this is my new deck. It's called the Empaths Oracle. The visuals are really cool. I'm gonna get two of these. Bonding with the rhythm of life and artistic expression. Expressing artistic creativity. Beautiful, the numbers are 14 and 40. The image symbolizes the immersion in the creative energy of the universe. When we are creatively active, it becomes a meditation on the flow of things, transforming chaos into something orderly. We are able to order this chaos and bring it to a higher state, which we then call art or science. The woman in the painting has mastered this art and from a place of stillness, she realizes the abundance of possibilities to express herself. She is the goddess of creativity. Yes, I talked about this last night. And I talked about how you cannot judge what comes out of you. It's important to just let energy flow in whatever type of creative form it might take. And it doesn't have to be fully realized. There can be drafts and stages of unblocking creative flow in order to get to masterful levels of re realizing and actualizing certain things into pieces. And I think a lot of us stop ourselves before we give the idea the chance to evolve through different lifetimes or iterations. It's important to be patient with the creative process. 40. Bonding with the rhythm of life. Asking how and why everything is meant to be. Noticing the cyclical nature of plants, animals, and the natural world. Surrendering to that which is unknown. The intricate painting for this card unveils layers of reality that exist within the human mind, consciousness, and earthly experience. The eternal and inseparable connection of everything that lives and exists is the central message of this picture. Everything is meant to be, right? This can be an excruciating theory to accept, but we find this message repeating over and over across time, culture, and religion. It's okay to doubt this at times, not least on account of the world's incomprehensible horrors, but somehow this outlook on life echoes inside the heart of every empath, even if we can't entirely understand how or why. The rhythm of life is evolution and expansion. Scientific fields currently recognize that empathy is a primary key in human and animalistic evolution. If everything is meant to be, then empathy is a force that propels things into their place. Hi, Katie. Poured myself a coffee and it seems to not have made it over here with me. <laughs> hmm. July 20th today. I recorded a reading last night. I had a lot going on <laughs> with song synchronicities and messages. So I never posted it because I need to review it in order to even figure out what a good title for it would be. Theme of today, theme that can carry us moving through the weekend into another mini cycle that exists within the larger cycle. The Knight of Swords, moving forward with a little bit more momentum than we've had before. What's with that energy of forward movement in the Knight of Swords? Challenges to overcome, challenges to overcome, show me that. Show me challenges to overcome. The Ace of Wands. Okay, I think in some ways we're intimidated by our ability to start new things. And I said this before with an interpretation of the Four of Swords. 
and the Seven of Swords. So here we have the Page of Swords. Yeah, there's, I said, obstacles, challenges to overcome. The Knight of Swords is what's kind of leading us into this next uptick of energetic momentum that we can ride. But I do think that there's intimidation around like the, the new beginning that we can cultivate. And it might have to do with the fact that we are overthinking it because of the sword in the page's hand. Or, okay, an, an alternative interpretation of that energy would be that I feel like we're taking too seriously the things that are meant to be the fun part of this, right? When you conceive of different goals or ideas or visions for the future, that's meant to create a pure, radiant, inspired energy within yourself because that's going to be the gasoline that you then go on your journey with around being able to actually bring it into view and bring it into being. So there's a need to be a little bit more light within our own energy around what it is that we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it instead of coming in with criticality because that can easily veer into self-judgment. What's the energy working with us right now? Energy working with and supporting what it is we're doing. Clearing out, move. Okay, what is it? Energy working with us, it's the five of swords. I feel like we're realizing where we've gotten in our own way before. And that's really important because if you're blind to it and you don't have accountability for it, then you can't actively and consciously have a desire to change it. What else is working with us right now? Hindsight's 2020, right? And again, I'm getting that wasp spirit, sometimes life stings card, which I mentioned in my reading last night as well, because it is this, you know, I've also talked about the Knight of Swords being like a harsh truth energy, but I think that we're well through the, that wave of harsh truths. I think we had the time to integrate them. I think, yeah, the world, right? The end of one cycle. And it will always be the birth of another one when one, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end, said Semisonic. Nine of Pentacles. So what else is working for us is the energy and the attitude of gratitude. It's, it's so available to us each and every day to activate our own flow of abundance. I split the deck and I get the Ace of Pentacles with our ability to just have, and the sun is here too at the other side, right? Happiness, happiness in its simplest form, happiness as we can take it and see it for a large scale <laughs> scenario, how the sun could shine on multiple parts of our lives, you know, on multiple projects that we have without letting this become this overwhelming, daunting thing. It is a little bit daunting, and I think that's also why the Ace of Wands was in the resistance position or the challenges that we're overcoming, because it's almost like when, when you are in this place where you're trying to keep it fun and envision things that actually don't tip you into a state of anxiety, you know, you want to be able to visualize something only to the extent that it inspires you and helps you move forward because you start to self-sabotage when you slip into the energy of like, ugh, here are all the ways that that's not going to work for me. That's not really productive. But when we haven't had the taste of a real, you know, first introduction energetically and like how expectations versus reality, really, here's the four of swords. We haven't had that stability around what the ground actually feels like under our feet, what it is like to converse, you know, about the new project once it's real, once it's in the world. Be with the partner that you want to be with once you're actually with them. That's the daunting energy that's here. I think it's like around, around a stepping out of the shadows that we've needed to be in in order to clear away some of the things that have been holding us back. And within that, I also see this inner connection. I heard purgatory. I heard purgatory. And I what, what I'm getting is like this, this need to connect back in with the self because of an ungroundedness. And if you don't have that connection to self, right? And this has to do with connecting to ways that we can express ourselves. Do you see all the blue in this? That is throat chakra energy. Obviously there are other colors in it, but when we can express ourselves creatively, sometimes we have the ability to let out energy that we can't otherwise articulate. 
And that goes for our ability to art articulate things for the benefit of others and communicate our own, our own truth, but saying it to ourselves too. And then this other part of what we've been going through is bonding with the rhythm of life, seeing ourselves as not separate, but as part of, as a result of, and able to contribute to something that is beyond us, that affects all people, and that we are equally a part of, regardless of kind of what, where it is we locate ourselves within different belief systems, because, you know, of the natural world, it was talking about the cycles of plants, animals, nature. There is evidence everywhere, and that has to do with synchronicities too. Seeing that you are held, seen, witnessed by the universe, and having that open, <coughs> excuse me, channel with the universe, start to validate that. Clarifiers for that. Judgment and the Six of Wands. Yeah, there's a victory. Do you see how, like, these apparitional beings, they're, they're ascending to something that's greater, right? Judgment. As above, so below, these things. And this is victory, success, and recognition. What do I have at the top of the deck and the bottom of the deck? Hmm, the Seven of Swords and the Eight of Wands. Yeah, so quickly now we're being able to release these parts of our identities that we haven't even wanted to admit are really even there. We're not trying to skirt around the outsides or be sneaky because we know now that that is to only deceive ourselves. There is no real benefit once the sun illuminates all things and we've been able to kind of go into the subconscious and what has collected there in the shadows. The divine has been working very, very hard in our favor to continue to lovingly guide us back to those parts of ourselves. And it's happened so much now that there is this ability to not feel any shame around the things that we haven't, you know, done as well as we wanted to in the past. One more clarifier, please, for this little spread here. This little quickity one. Hmm. Energy, energy to be embraced at this time. What can we embrace? Didn't fully flip. I'm not going to take it here. That one did though. <laughs> the page of pentacles. Mm. Okay. So what, what this is giving me in the resistance position with the Ace of Wands when we had the Page of Swords. It's almost like we want to be two steps ahead of where we're currently at. You see how she's already on her feet. She's still pondering. She's seated. She's contemplating what this new beginning could look like in a very simple way of what I said before. Because we haven't had that real taste of like, what is the new soil under my boots going to feel like? I just saw like a military person jumping out of a helicopter and being like, doof, like, the way that it would sound if we hit the ground, hit the ground running. It's almost like we're getting ahead of ourselves and that we want to be able to, mm. yeah, I think skip parts of, if we can't tolerate the peace and the goodness that we get, if we're afraid of it in some way, because it starts to tip into that, uh, like too good to be true type of thing. If you can't tolerate Tolerate it even as a theoretical possibility in your realm of being able to daydream and plan out new timelines for yourself, then you won't be able to tolerate it in real life. So I feel like this is kind of this like forging ahead in a rite of passage type manner as we move through this another, you know, mini cycle, close out and continue, refine, continue to have gratitude for the things that we have successfully let go of and being able to do that with a little bit more faith. Not having like a full-blown understanding of, you know, how the changes that we're making right now are fully going to come to fruition throughout the different areas of our lives, but just needing to not, you know, get ahead of that. And there's still so much faith that's involved. And so coming back to the present moment and thinking about the contemplation of what each and every day can hold, because even though we haven't like had the boots on the ground, new territory experience I see a dissonance between wanting to skip to that part and putting in the necessary work in order to get there actually give me one clarifier top and bottom for that energy 
Yeah, okay, and again, we have the Four of Wands showing up. So it's about it's about stability. It's about having this isn't the nine of the Knight of Pentacles, it's the Knight of Swords. So it's not like we're basically like on pause because the Knight of Pentacles just moves so incredibly slowly. The Knight of Swords is fast, forward, confident movement, but sometimes it could be more short sighted and it's almost like we're not sitting within the fact that what we're trying to rush to, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. There's a faith that has to be cultivated around that too. There's this pressure, right? It's a self-induced pressure to be ahead of where we already are. And we have to come back to the present moment, the present day, and have some faith in the new beginnings that will, you know, there's this emotional letdown or this fear of emotional letdown. And I don't think we're necessarily at risk of that if we can continue to listen to our intuition every day and the things that will, will come up if we're kind of in that daydreaming phase or continuing to lay bricks in the different, you know, foundations of these different dreams and ideas that we're creating. And that could just even be as plainly expressed as like a desire to do something different. Like, this is how I do it now. This is how it could be. I'm not exactly where I'd like to be. I have the ability to change X, Y, and Z. And then let that kind of become your guiding visualization where you see yourself operating in a world and a schedule around people doing the things that would exemplify this, this, you know, walking, talking, changed behavior that you know you're capable of having, being, doing in whatever way, in whatever part of your life, in whatever area it might apply for you. Oops. What I think that we're getting right now as we move into this midweek, into the weekend, is like we're understanding that it doesn't have to feel and be in these extremes of like devastation and elation. We can be a little bit more even keeled around the notion of peace. And we can welcome and sustain that energy and it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be a letdown. <laughs> right? There's a fear of being let down. There's a fear of being let down, but that, that comes from kind of attaching, seeing certain things as um, saviors or scapegoats or, you know, if there's nothing to hide. If we don't have anything to hide, then we don't have anything to skirt around. And so I think that we have started to inhabit because of the healing work and allowing certain things to come full circle as we admit those things to ourselves we have this ability to sit down into the center of ourselves and of our truth that those lies and illusions around our own identities were taking up space. There's this cleared out ability to hold oneself. Queen of Swords and King of Cups came out. Yeah, I mean, I love, absolutely love this pairing because this is like this dominant queen and this is this tender king. And they go, there's this beautiful dichotomy within that because of the yin and yang, the masculine, and the feminine, but that it is the masculine queen. It is the more feminine king. And it's not in any other type of like I'm seeing, I was talking in my video the other, yeah, the other day about relationship dynamics and how in so many cases, if there is a woman or a wife in a in a relationship, and that could just be the female energy of the one partner in the in the same sex partnership or however the energy translates in anybody's anybody's situation if she continues to take on more things without giving space for the partner to step up and do those things but continues to blame him for not you know being on her timetable of when things needed to be done she is kind of in a way limiting herself because she's betraying her own ability to take on a certain amount and know her own limits and put a cap on it it's this controlling way of wanting to have somebody walk in step with your own expectations and then you do set yourself up for disappointment instead of moving in tandem and in harmony with how two people can show up to support the same common goal and that could be like keeping the house clean or um I don't know going about disciplining the children in a united front type of way that is self self-referential and supportive so that you're not undermining each other and I'm just getting that there's this clearing out. And I talked about kind of a healing of a masculine collective. I feel like the women are releasing the idea 
I, I don't even know what I'm saying around this with like the women, but it could also just right, be this, the feminine nature of one individual person. So the receptive side, the dreamier side around keying into those nudges from the intuition that are helping us make the space and release the things for the new things that we have the higher tolerance to hold and possess and therefore work towards in a stable way that isn't led by any such exhilaration. It's like, it's like we're calming ourselves down from having to rush or do anything because we're partnered and led by this softer ability to do and execute. It's not the King of Swords, it's the King of Cups. And I just see it as being this understanding and this inversion. I said this before, it's like an inversion of emasculation, which is very interesting. Can I get a clarifier? I'm cutting the deck for that. Death. Yeah, a complete shutting out, shutting, not, not shutting out, excuse me. Shut, closing out, closing out of something. We had the world and death in this one reading. <sighs> clarifier on the kind of cycle that's being closed out given the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords. So a, a restabilization of those energies where there was some blame, even, you know, within the self, like blame around how we exhausted ourselves and tried to do too much, but then we didn't feel fulfilled, right? This negating of emotional energy and this overdrive of <laughs> executional energy. Um, one clarifying card for that. Ah, yeah, it's temperance. It's It's about having realized that we... We do have, <clears throat> we do have the ability to move things in the physical world with intention, with patience, with faith, and with will instead of forcing things. And with, with that kind of realization, we understand that more comes as a result of changing the quality of our inner world. So when you don't allow that trickle down process of the aligning of the mind, body and spirit to self inform and change, I'm just kind of seeing, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's like one of those gifts where there's like this, this sinkhole, there's like this thing. It's like a, it's like a hot spring. Something's always coming up from the surface, right? And if we just jump into something and judge outcomes that haven't fully manifested yet, then we are technically tampering with them. And it's like we have this more dynamic flow around acting, witnessing, receiving, recalibrating, continuing to move, accepting situations, course correcting, you know, going back in, not letting that be this dejected process of I must not be doing it right, you know? It's inverted on itself so that we can understand that that is kind of part of the witnessing of consciously led life and intention. It has a much more different quality to it. I really like these three. I would feel like I'm very, I'm very entrusting of things with this. If this was the board of a little program, I'd be like, take my money. I trust you guys. You can work it out. That's what our higher selves is doing with those energies right now. It's saying like, this is a, this is a trustworthy navigation system. Something to close it out. Something to close it out. Ooh, a jumper. Strength. Ooh, a jumper. Strength. Strength, the devil and the, and the nine of swords. I haven't seen the devil in a little while, which is a good thing because we're conquering our inner demons and we're allowing this other energy to be more of our focus. And it's not that this energy hasn't gone away. It's that the scales have tipped so that we have this equally, if not greater and growing focus on the antidotes to our own, you know, our own, our own worst self inner critical aspects that keep us stuck in cycles that don't benefit us. And with strength, it's just this reminder. It's just this reminder that each and every day is a new choice to choose. Each and every moment is a new choice to have the self-awareness around. If you're judging yourself, if you're being too harsh with yourself, if you have unrealistic expectations about the rate or the methods around your own healing, you have to kind of relinquish and release some of that um, control essence that you have over the situation because if, if there's any kind of disappointment in yourself or how you're doing, and I'm not saying, you know, 
fail to recognize if you do need to still realign in some ways, it's important to see with honest clarity. And again, like affirming like that you have clarity and sight, you know, we want to be able to trust our own feelings and, and insight and foresight that we understand through intuitive nudges around what's happening in our lives. And uh, you're only going to get there by continuing to show yourself that you can trust, that you can trust yourself. And we can have self-fulfilling prophecies around the, 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 the inverse of that. Um, and so patience and temperance are still at play, especially around fully releasing the devil energies. And I'm just going to get one animal oracle. Mr. Schmoo. <laughs> I address my dog and then I get dog spirit. Be loyal. Be loyal to what you love. Yeah, right, because the devil energies, it's like, I said this in my reading around falling around the tower's demise and things being completely, like, we don't, <laughs> we're responding to things that have changed without our consent or control, but now we are more consciously thinking about what can I control, what do I want to do, and... It's like, I think the devil energies are, <laughs> every now and then, it's like somebody who can't, it's like somebody who can't leave a party is what I'm getting. And they keep kind of going back in to be like, are you sure nobody wants to like split a taxi? Are you sure no one wants to come to the after party? Like I'm heading there now. Are you sure nobody wants to come? And we have to keep being like, yes, I'm sure. And then the more times we're asked, you know, maybe the more sure we'll become. But there's also this tediousness of like, even if we, dog spirit it said it said be loyal to what you love even if we know that the things that we've entertained once before in the past are not for us or aligned with what we love or this heart-centered energy out of sheer annoyance of the fact that they keep tempting us or popping up again we might just be like yeah what the hell um and that is where you need to summon and call upon your inner strength because we know better and when you know better you do better What's our spirit animal energy? I'll shuffle out here so you can see. Nope. One good animal totem for the day, please, to help us throughout the weekend, too. I don't know if I'm going to post my reading from last night. Show me what this is. What is our card for the day? What do we need to know right now? There it is. <laughs> it's hummingbird spirit that we saw the other day. It says be here now and it's number 34. Hummingbird spirit, I, this is tying into the message around the Knight of Swords and kind of this, this nervousness of like wanting to move on to the next thing. I was saying if you can't tolerate the idea of peace that you can cultivate with your visions, how are you actually going to be able to tolerate what tolerate it when it's here? Especially because you know it's not going to look or feel exactly like the visions or the dreams or the hopes. But instead of being like, it's going to fall flat, you can go above and beyond and say, how can this be? I, I want my, my dreams, hopes, and desires to be exceeded. You can make that part of the prayer, you know, and people have different affirmations around summoning, not summoning, I don't want to use that word, but being able to co-create outcomes that they want and they they lock it into this space of saying just like this or better you know yield it to me in in conditions that have this emotional resonance or higher i'm only accepting things that make me feel this way that help me feel like more of myself that help me feel free those feelings they come with this notion of uncompromised there's an uncompromised quality you know it doesn't include any disappointment and we're not in fear of that but i think that with hummingbird spirit another part of the message from the guidebook around this energy is like if you're not satisfied or capable of being satisfied in one place the anxious the anxious shiftiness around that will cause you to go from one flower to the next to the next and hummingbirds have this interdimensional you know multilateral they can pivot and go in different directions there's an ability to that and a gift to that but it's asking us to slow slow down be here now you don't have to hop from flower to flower to get what you want. You need to become more comfortable sitting with the sweetness. And this goes back to the beginning of the reading with Nine of Pentacles and being able to appreciate what we do have, what we're moving towards, 
and not let the in-betweenness of that process eject us from the faith that that's how it's supposed to go and that's how it's supposed to be. There's a lot of power in being able to do that. And I almost get this hummingbird spirit as well as queuing up and tying in to the page of Pentacles where it's like there is this need to sit back down, right? You're not really going anywhere. You've, you've done so much work with the world card, with the death card of closing out certain things. And I think that we are kind of, you know, going somewhere and, and going somewhere fast. But, but how are we going to be able to do that if we're not even like fully set on you know, the divine timing that the journey wants to be on itself. It's like, it's like being an anxious kid and having the car packed and going on a trip and keep, the kid keeps running, running out and getting in the car and the parents are still, you know, inside putting final touches on, I don't know, suitcases or the cooler for the, for the car picnic and whatever else needs to happen. And there's this like anxious restlessness within not being able to tolerate the actual, you know, ETA, the actual duration of the journey. And how do you stop, you know, being stricken with that type of restlessness? You stop focusing on it, you know? You stop focusing on it. You wait for the parents to come out and load everything up. And then, you know, you're on the road before you know it. And when, when things kind of get underway, you forget that you were even waiting to go anywhere because you're focused on what it is you're doing, you know? The crossword puzzle or whatever he started to focus on that took his mind off of the fact that there is even time passing. Because with the temperance card, it matters less about where you're at in the continuum of being able to process and move through something because all points are kind of, you know, who's to say you're not kind of simultaneously at the end and the beginning. We have a lot of different... <laughs> collapsing little cycles and narratives that are intertwined that make locating ourselves sort of a pointless process because that is the type of thing that can put you on someone's timetable outside of any other type of way of looking at it other than being like I accept where I'm at how I'm doing where I can go with it you know all of it there's a sense of acceptance around that and it has to do with strength again right saying no to the temptations that we used to so easily, even out of just boredom, right? Not because we're weak, but because we were bored. We have, with the dog spirit, be loyal to what you love, the ability to prioritize the things that are working for us as we discover new parts of ourselves. Taking that seriously and choosing it over and over again because it's going to be the path to more sustainability. Okay.